What is up, guys? Uh, I love this game. Uh, I think this music is very fitting. I love this game, and I think you should get this game. Uh, this is like my little review for Far Cry 5. Uh, so, it's pretty much, uh, when I first got introduced to Far Cry, I was on the uh, Xbox 360, and it was Far Cry 3. And I loved the game. I loved the idea of hiding in, hiding on top of a mountain and sniping people and then moving in with a bow and arrow and shooting people that way. So, uh, obviously I had to get Far Cry 4, and Far Cry 4 was even better than Far Cry 3 in my opinion. Uh, and then Far Cry Primal came out, and I know a lot of people didn't like it, uh, mostly because it was, uh, the map was like a reskin of Far Cry 4, but in uh, prehistoric times. And uh, also that it just lacked content with the amount of, like, you can only have a spear, a bow, and a club, and throwing shards, and a slingshot. But, uh, I really like paleon, I really like prehistoric shit, and, like, cavemen. So I always had a soft spot for, the, for that game, and I liked it. And then, a few years later, Far Cry 5 comes out, and I believe this is the best Far Cry game. Uh, I'm going to say right off the bat, if you enjoy the Far Cry series or first-person shooters in general, open-world first-person shooters, get this game. You're not going to go wrong by getting this game. This map is huge. Uh, I believe it's bigger than Far Cry 4 and Primal. Just please, please, for the love of God, get this game. So, uh, this is going to have a ton of spoilers, so if you don't want to get spoiled for anything story-wise, gameplay-wise, uh, don't watch after this. Alright, so, I'm going to start from the beginning, like the intro to the game, and then I have like a whole list of stuff, I'm just going to go from top to bottom. So, the intro to the game, uh, your character is a silent protagonist, and that is one of my problems with this game. Your character has no name, and he slash she, you, you can make it, you can choose your character, you can choose your character's gender, what they look like, what color skin they have, and this is the first time you get to really customize that kind of stuff, uh, which is cool, but I still would have appreciated your character have a voice, like, even if it did take, like, even if it did have to take, like, two voice actors, like, one male, one female, to do it, it, it still could have worked, but, I don't know, that's, like, the biggest problem with this game, is that your character doesn't talk, uh, your character is ca either called Rook or Deputy, uh, Rook being short for Rookie, because, uh, at the beginning of the game, you are a police officer, you're a rookie, as your other police comrades, uh, what's it called, uh, and, like, just talk to you as, like, they say, like, hey, Rook, put the cuffs on him, or like, hey, deputy, how you doing? And, um, I would have, it should have been a named character, like, they could have picked a character's name who, like, can have, like, a boy and a girl can have the same name. Uh, I know, uh, Telltale, the Minecraft story mode, stupid fucking game, had a... Jesse, Jesse. Jesse could... It could have been, like, Jesse. Because Jesse could be a boy and a girl's name, but whatever. So, you're starting off in a helicopter, uh, flying into Hope County, Montana. Uh, you, uh, start off by flying by this huge statue of Joseph, which is the main character. And he is the leader of this religious cult who are claiming that the world is going to end, uh, very shortly. Uh, they never specify how the world is going to end, but it's, uh, hinted how the world's going to end through various radio, radio, uh, broadcasts, um, Right before starting this uh, video, uh, I was sitting in uh, this truck here, and I was just sitting there for like 20 minutes, and eventually uh, this new broadcast came on 
It was talking about like, oh, 19 people, 19 U.S. Uh, uh, soldiers were killed in the Middle East. This is causing tension between the country. If nuclear war does happen, the U.S. will have to get involved. And, um, yeah, I think this is, I know there was a lot of controversy about like, oh, man, why is it a religious cult? Like, why is it American? Like, I, I don't really know the, like, the details, but I know a ton of people were pissed off because, like, oh, wh what's wrong with, like, killing America? Like, why do you have to kill Americans, bro? And I'm like, I think you would rather have Americans kill Americans and have Americans kill, like, Africans in Far Cry 2. Uh, fucking Hispanic drug dealers in Far Cry 3. Um, Asian... Asian and, uh, Kiratans in Far Cry 4. Like, and even then, like, I don't care. A bad guy's a bad guy, and they have to have the bad guys fit with their region. And it just so happened that Africans are in Africa, Kiratans are in Kirat. Fucking Hispanic drug dealers are on tropical islands. So, like, who cares if it's if it's an American killing an American. Uh, whatever, but, um... So you're flying your helicopter uh, with three other people, the U.S. Marshal, uh, the Sheriff, and this female deputy. And you... You uh, land at Joseph's compound right here. You land around right here-ish, and then you go along the path, eventually getting to uh, his church. And then you go in there, and he's, like, preaching to his people, and, um, pretty much the deputy, uh, walks up, I mean, the marshal, sorry, the marshal walks up, and he's like, uh, Joseph Seed, I have a warrant for your arrest, and, um, he tells, uh, Joseph tells all of his, uh, cult members to leave, except for his, uh, three siblings who, uh, stay behind him, and, uh, the three siblings, here I'll scroll out the map, uh, John, Faith, Jacob, and Joseph. So uh, if you guys didn't know, each, uh, each of the villains represents the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Joseph, Joseph, John represents famine because he steals all the food and water to uh, supply his own uh, cult members. Faith is pestilence because she poisons the water with hallucinogens. Uh, Jacob is war because he is a veteran and he's uh, super into like militarizing uh, animals and cult members. And Joseph is death for obvious reasons. So you can put, so uh, Joseph puts his hands out and he's like, God will not let you take me. And he's like, whatever you do here will matter in the long run, or whatever. And, uh, it says press X to handcuff him, so... Obviously you do. But, there's actually a secret ending where if you don't handcuff him, uh... The, mar uh, the sheriff, uh, tells you all to leave, and says that, like, if you put those handcuffs on him, you will never get out of here alive. And the game ends, and I like that because it's a little callback to Far Cry uh, 4 with the secret ending, where if you just wait there for 15 minutes, uh, Pagan Min will come back after torturing that guy, and you'll have a nice dinner with him, and the game will end right there. So, you put the handcuffs on him, and you take him out to your helicopter. Uh, as you're flying away, uh, it gets shot down, and then pretty much uh, the sheriff and the female deputy get captured and then it's just you and the marshal running through the woods until eventually uh, the marshal gets captured by uh, John, uh, Joseph's men and you get uh, rescued by Dutch who is in charge of this little center island right here and uh, you're right here at Dutch, Dutch's bunker and uh, this island is just a little starting point uh, you can't leave this island until you complete all the objectives here. It's not that bad, it took me like 20 minutes. Uh, there's a radio tower you have to climb up. Uh, but that's the only radio tower. 
that you have to climb up so there's no like radio towers to reveal more of the map there's no bonfires to light like in far cry primal uh he actually um cracks a joke he's like i'm not gonna fucking make you climb radio towers this whole goddamn time just go around do what you want and um i think that's great i think that's great that like you can just exp explore at your own leisure I've been playing this game since it came out, and I still am missing little bits and pieces to the map. See where this uh, blue fog is? Here, like, right here. And where this blue haze is, I haven't explored, but everywhere else where it's colored in, I have gone to. And, uh, as you can see, the mini-map is gone, which is also great. It, uh, further reinforces exploration. And, yeah. So, pretty much... Uh, after you escape Joseph, uh, Joseph's compound, you do a ton of various missions in each little region until you get up to the main boss. And the boss battles are alright. Uh, Jos- uh, John's is one of my favorite because he's the most sadistic in my opinion. And his mission is just like the most- the most enjoyable. You start off, uh, inside uh, the church here, and then he, uh, cuts up one of your friends and staples his skin to this, uh, section right here. So you chase him, you get into a truck right here, and you just, you just go driving, and you get into a plane, and you have to shoot him down, and, um, it's probably one of the most action-packed missions, uh, like, boss levels. Uh, Faith's boss level, uh, she, she hallucinates you, and you have to, like, shoot her over and over, like her body keeps disappearing and like you don't know if you're shooting the right one or not. And uh, hers is alright. I, I actually like her the least out of all the villains. They just could have written her a little bit better. But um, Jacob, I can't exactly remember uh, how you defeat Jacob. Like what initiates the boss fight. But um, pretty much you have to destroy these uh, beacons, which are calling in these uh, demonic wolves. And uh, once you do that, you have to find them and just shoot them, pretty much. And um, I loved all the villains. Uh, John was great. He's like that char charismatic character. He's kind. He kind of reminds me of Pagan Min, where he can be really charming and nice at one moment, and then. Just go on to stab a guy the next. Uh, Jacob, I, he's like the really creepy, really quiet, like all up in your face kind of guy. Really subtle and like all about like giving you those like death stares or like you're on the ground and he looks at you from like standing over top of you. Really like a level of superiority with him. And then with Faith, uh, she just appears gives you a little sob story, st sob story about her being a drug, drug addict and possibly like abused by her family and bullied by her friends. And uh, she makes the US Marshal blow his fucking brains out in one of the hallucinations leading up to her boss battle. So that uh, that's charming. Um, All right, so gameplay. I think the gunplay is the best it's ever been in any Far Cry. Uh, when you shoot someone, you feel that impact of the gun. When you hit someone with a shovel, you you can just you can feel it like your controller vibrates when you hit them, and you you just feel the weight of the weapon hitting them. Like I'll do it now. Thanks a million. I missed that example. Come on. And the way their bodies just like fly. It's like, it's so good, it's so satisfying to get a kill. Uh, you can also throw these weapons, so... You, you throw those, like the clubs in Far Cry uh, Primal, like any bats, pipes, or sticks. And uh, the shovels, you can throw like a spear, and they actually uh, stick into enemies and animals and whatever you hit. So... Uh, there's no unlimited sprint. Which is something I don't like, because... Alright, so I'm going to regain my energy, and then I'm going to show you how fast you can run uh, before you start to slow down. All 
All right, so about eight seconds. Do you see your character start to watch this? See, he started to slow down. He's getting tired. I don't really like that. I I wish there was a perk where um you can unlock unlimited sprint like in all the other Far Cry games. But um, it is what it is. It's not like it's not gonna throw me away from this game. Like it was a little bit of a pet peeve at first because uh, when I'm I'd be like trying to run away from uh, two enemies that from a group of enemies that saw me, and uh, I'd just like slow down. And they'd catch up to me and start shooting me. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's like another little negative, but that's just personal preference. Um, the perk system. Oh, sweet, I can get a new perk, actually. <laughs> so, um, sorry about, like, the sniffling. I have, um, I have a cold right now. But, um, there's no crafting to unlock bigger wallets or, like, bigger ammo holsters. Uh, which... I don't like that, to be honest. Because the crafting was a huge thing with the Far Cry series. Like, if you want to get a bigger wallet, you have to go and skin a shark, and then use that shark skin to build it. And then if you want to upgrade it, you have to get a tiger skin, for example, and then you have to get a tiger. And uh, I, I love that system, and it's gone here. But I guess it makes sense since, like, this is modern times, you're not, like, out in the wilderness, you're in, like, civilization. So I can, I can give the pass here. Uh... Alright, so the replayability, um, it's, it's alright. Like, once you beat all the bosses, that's it. Like, you can't go back and fight them again unless you want to create a new save. I beat all the story missions, all of the looting, uh, all the little loot boxes, as far as I know. I defeated all the outposts, and all I need to do now is get all these little side missions where I have to... Uh, escort, uh, where I have to destroy these escorts, or, uh, destroy these radio beacons or shrines. The only missions that I don't have right now are these, uh, Clutch Nixon missions, where you have to, like, drive in a car, or, like, a boat, or, like, it's pretty much like a, like, a extreme sports kind of thing, where you have to drive through, like, rings of fire, and, like, driving's, I'm not the best at driving, so that's kind of put off for me. I'll probably do it. Like, I'll probably end up doing it just so I can 100% the game, but uh, yeah, for now, eh. So, character customization. Since there's co-op, you want to make your characters look different, so there's a whole range of character customization. You can get different outfits, I got this one for owning Far Cry Primal on the PS4. Uh, this one I got to do in a mission. This one for uh, owning uh, Rainbow Six Siege on the PlayStation. Uh, there's a, a ton of really cool ones. This one is an Easter egg to Far Cry Blood Dragon. And I just, I really like these. They're not over the top, but they're like just right. I like this one because I'm a hunter in real life, and this is the kind of stuff that I actually wear when I hunt. But you don't have to get, like, whole outfits. You can uh, mix and match however the way you like. The Testicle Festival. Alright, so let's just make, like, a random outfit. Let's get the Testicle Festival. Let's get some... Let's get the Primal... The Primal, um... Fucking tunic, or it's not a tunic, but whatever. Let's get the flame bearer mask, and let's just let's just put some bandages on my. All right, so here's my character, and you can make him however you want. Uh, I just like being organized. I just like having one set uh, uniform on. So um, yeah, the replayability is all right. Um, you can reset the outposts. So, uh, here, I'll just go into options. Actually, Outpost Master. Reset all cold outposts in their hostile state. Do you want to proceed? Any incomplete quest links to them will be locked until they are liberated again. So, by doing that, you will pretty much re reset all of your settings. Reset all the settings that you've had while liberating these outposts right here. 
and um, I did that a couple times and it's fun to go in but it just it seems to go by really fast when you're off and collecting them like defeating each one it doesn't seem like much of a challenge defeating these outposts like it was in Far Cry 4 or Far Cry 3 and I don't really like that I'd like there to be a bit more challenge maybe they are challenging and they're just like not as many but it's either they're not challenging and there's a lot of them or there's not All of any of them it. but they're like decently challenging but um that's pretty much it for replayability like unless if you want to if you want to go and get, like, if you want to go and play all the different side missions again, you can't do that. You have to re you have to create a new save. Uh, I, I kind of wish, I kind of wish there was a way to just reset all those, but whatever. So, uh, there are three endings to this game, and I'm going to go to, into each one in partial death. So. The first ending, which is my favorite one, is the quote-unquote good ending, and I like this one uh, for the main reason that it's one of the first endings where the bad guy actually wins. Like, wins wins. Like, doesn't, like, like not just like, oh, he gets to live at the very end. No, like, he straight up fucking beats you. So, the final mission in the game, well, the final, uh, boss fight is with Joseph Seed. You meet him back at the co uh, compound where it all started, and uh, he has your three sheriff, uh, he has your three policeman friends uh, all held up at gunpoint, and he has uh, your Hope County friends, like the priest and Nick Rye and Herc, all hypnotized by the hallucinogen bliss that uh, Fates was creating. So they're hypnotized and they're working for him. So, uh, pretty much, he gives you the option. He's like, you can walk away, or you can, uh, you can fight me. And uh, if you fight him, he dumps these two barrels of bliss, and uh, this like kind of hurricane or tornado like engulfs you, and uh, you have to kill your friends and then uh, revive them in order to, uh, in order to uh, bring them back on your side. So, you do that, and then once you defeat Joseph, uh, he says something like, he says something about, like, the seven trumpets, and, like, the sirens of God himself, or, like, whatever, and then a nuclear blast goes off, and I fucking love it. Just so eerie how, like, he was right in the end. Like, he predicted that the world was gonna end, and he was right. So... For some dumb fucking reason, uh, the sheriff takes Joseph and puts him in the truck with you. And he's like, drive, 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 get to a fucking bunker now. And you leave all your friends behind. You leave the, you leave, uh, Mary May, you leave Herc behind, you leave Sharky, the priest, you leave Nick behind, with his newborn daughter, you leave, you leave him behind. Like, you don't even try to offer any of them a ride. You can only take uh, Joseph, the sheriff, and the two deputies. So pretty much, you have to try to drive to uh, Dutch's bunker. There's trees crashing around you. There's birds on fire. There's uh, like people running away. There's like uh, just more explosions of more bombs going off, and uh, you crash into a tree. Uh, which throws the sheriff out of the windshield and kills uh, the two deputies in the back seat. But uh, you and John, uh, you and Joseph survive because plot armor, and he carries you into Dutch's bunker where he uh, kills Dutch off screen, and you're pretty much stuck in there with Joseph, and, and you're there to do for him to do as he pleases with you. He says that you killed all my family, but now you're my family. And we're gonna walk the this gate together once this is all over, and then the credits roll. And I love that ending because it's so grim, and it's so eerie, and that's why I personally think that the father, that Father Joseph is one of the best villains 
in Far Cry. I I didn't like Voss as much as most people. Uh, Pagan Min I love. I, I even loved the uh, villains in Far Cry Primal just because they were so unique. Like one of them was like very like she was based off like fire and like very like worshiping God, and the other one was just a ruthless cannibal. So um yeah, a ton of people are wondering where the bombs, like why the nukes went off. That guy just crashed. But um. Uh, a ton of people are thinking that uh, Joseph and the Colt had access to these weapons, and they and Joseph somehow set them off. Uh, I don't really like that theory because one, how would you smuggle like five or six nuclear bombs into into the U.S. without anyone noticing? Secondly, it, it just seems dumb because there's so much evidence pointing to the fact that it's not the cult's fault that the nukes went off, that's in fact like an other world, like another, uh, like a third, like a second or third world country, like Russia or the Middle East or North Korea or China or something, because there's all these radio, uh, radio broadcasting cars where it's saying like, oh, tensions with Russia and North Korea are rising as the revenues of the war grows larger and there's like newspaper clippings about like uh, inevitable nuclear war. Um, yeah, I just, I love it so much. I just love the fact of, I just love the idea of a bad guy winning and being right in the end. But um, so I already explained the secret ending. So the bad ending is uh, you w w get to walk out with your three deputy friends, but you just you leave your other friends behind, so whatever. Uh, the nuke's still going to go off, but it doesn't in this ending, but we can only assume that's going to go off anyway, because there's nothing stopping uh, whatever faction was attacking the U.S. from dropping them now. So uh, you start to drive away, and the sheriff's like, we're not gonna leave. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, drive to this other state. And we're gonna bring in the coast. We're gonna bring in the uh, national guard, and we're gonna raise hell, and we're gonna uh, finally beat this place. So he turns this song on the radio, and it, it just so happens to be the song that Jacob has been hypnotizing you with, in order to make you go on a violent murderous rampage. So he turns the radio on, your screen starts to glow red, uh, symbolizing that the fact that uh, Rook is starting to go nuts. Uh, the sheriff looks at you and asks what's wrong, and it cuts to black. I like that ending too, just because, like, again, it's like the villain ends up winning at the end. But um, since it's considered the bad ending, uh, that ending doesn't actually defeat Joseph, and uh, it doesn't clear out his region, so it, uh, you have to go back and do the good ending, quote unquote good ending. And then once you do the good ending where the nuke gets set off and you're stuck in the bunker with him, then uh, it finally uh, clears out his region. So there are some reappearances from past games. Uh, Herc and Willis both come back from Far Cry 3 and 4. Uh, Herc uh, lives with his dad all the way over up in Jacob's region at Fort Drubman. And uh, he's as funny as ever. He's my favorite. He's one of my favorite uh, guns for hire that you can assign. Uh, his mom is also a uh, guns for hire, but uh, she's a helicopter pilot, so she can bring in a helicopter to, uh, to bring you places. And uh, his cousin, Sharky, uh, he's impervious to fire and uh, explosions, and he also shoots incendiary shotgun rounds, which is cool. And uh, I uploaded a video yesterday of, or maybe it was, I, I uploaded a video either yesterday or the day before of a funny interaction between Sharky and Kurt, so you guys should check that out if you're in for a laugh. But, um...
sorry about that. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh god. Uh. Alright, so Willis comes back uh, from Far Cry 3. If you don't know who Willis is, Willis uh, was the guy who uh, flew the plane for you in Far Cry 3 to get you to the southern island. Uh, and then he pretty much screws you over and throws you out of the plane. And then he comes back in Far Cry 4, uh, where he flies you up to the top of Mount Everest and screws you over and pushes you out of the plane. Uh, this time he comes back and he's asking you to get em uh, embarrassing uh, pictures or videos of someone, uh, if, if I remember correctly. And uh, this whole mission is in reference to uh, uh, Russia supposedly having picture embarrassing photos of Trump that uh, they were going to leak. Uh, <laughs> apparently it involves a, a bed and like a bed being wet or something. I don't know, I don't really want to know. But um, he comes back and he's like, yeah, thanks for your help, but I don't need you anymore. So he, he kind of screws you up too, so uh, I punched him in the face and just left him there. So um, uh, there is going to be future DLC, there's going to be a Vietnam map and a short little story pack. There's going to be a zombie one, and there's going to be an escape from Mars one where you're in Mars and you have to shoot aliens and um, that's pretty cool I uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the Vietnam and the zombie ones um, yeah nothing much more I can say they're not out yet so I don't really know how to judge them but from what I've seen from the trailers they look really good so uh, I'm wonder I'm wondering where this is gonna set up Far Cry 6 because um, all, all the Far Cry games are connected because Herc and Willis are like the links together. So I'm wondering, uh, which of the endings is canon. I'm assuming that the nuclear ending is canon, and maybe in Far Cry 6, if, uh, Herc comes back, which, come on, he's, he's gonna come back. But, uh, so when Herc comes back, I wonder if he's gonna tell, like, the main protagonist, like, yeah, I was in Montana and it got bombed to shit, so I had to leave. Or something like that. That would be appreciated. So, uh, pretty much my main problems with this game uh, is, like, closing off. Uh, the crafting is gone. The, uh, not much replayability. The silent protagonist and the the uh, temporary uh, limited sprints, but that one, that little one, is just a little pet peeve. Uh, the positives: gunplay and driving and flying is as great as it's ever been. It feels so good to just shoot people and hit people with bats. It feels great to hunt with a bow. It feels great to fish. There's fishing in this game, and I literally spent three hours just fishing because it's that it's that fun for me. And I hate fishing in real life. My brother, my little brother is a fisherman in the family, and I love fishing in this game. Uh, another positive: the villains. I think this is the best group of villains ever. I know people love Boss, but I'm I'm sorry, Boss is just like crazy crazy, but the father and his family is, like, an aware type of crazy. They're functioning crazy, like, they're not mass, they're not heartless, their, their intentions are good, but they still kill people, which is why I love them. They're so, like, dark and grim and gritty. Uh, it is, um, I'm not, I'm not, like, I didn't mean to say, like, oh, I can't think of any fucking positive. Uh, I love the map. Uh, I love the modern setting. I hope from now on we stick to modern settings. I don't want to go into future. If we were going to go into past, like, dinosaur age, uh, bring it, have it in modern times, but have, like, a Jurassic Park kind of dinosaur area. That, that would be great. That would be, like, 
my favorite Far Cry if that came out. Uh, the side missions are pretty good. A uh, ton of Easter eggs, actually. Uh, Easter eggs to Pennywise and It. Uh, there's Easter eggs to past Far Cry games. There's uh, uh, when you're at Herc's house, you know. Ooh, three for sure. When you're in a Herc's house, or he has boxes, uh, it says Rook Island shit, which is the setting for the third game. Curat shit, which is the uh, setting for the fourth game, and then Oros, Oros shit, which is the setting of Far Cry Primal, where uh, his ancestor, Erky, was actually uh, the replacement for Herc in that game. Uh, there's also Far Cry Blood Dragon uh, Easter eggs, which are always appreciated. There was a Far Cry Blood Dragon now. Easter eggs in a Primal, and there may have been in Far Cry 4 as well, I can't quite remember. But, um, the, the reintroduction of Willis and Herc is great. Nice little nod back to 3 and 4. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other Easter eggs. There's, there had to have been more Easter eggs. Um, hmm. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure there were more Easter eggs. So. Pretty much that's my review of Far Cry 5. You should get this game if you... If you enjoy Far Cry in the past, if you enjoy open world first person shooters, you should totally get this game. Because it is so worth it. There's no reason not to get it. And don't listen to any of the people online saying like, oh, the story is crap. It, it's, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense because like, why would there be a cult in the US without people coming in here and raising hell? Because... Who cares? Like, no one cared that, like, there was a tropical island with drug dealers and uh, human traffickers, and I'm, pretty, and I'm pretty sure that area was kind of remotely close to air, uh, America, probably South America, but if there is drug dealing human traffickers going on, I'm pretty sure the U.S. military is going to step in. And no one complained about Far Cry 3 just because Fox is in the game. So, I don't think this story is crap. Maybe, maybe I'm just too young to see the flaws of this story, but I think this is a really well done story. Uh, I don't agree with uh, Worth the Buy saying like, oh, the story is shit and the villains are terrible. I don't really agree with Nerd Cubes about, like, oh, I'm, I'm not even going to finish this game because I know it's going to be bad. If you get this game, you got to finish it or else you're missing out on something truly, truly amazing. Alright, so that was my review of Far Cry 5. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts of Far Cry 5 down in the description. Please subscribe and give me a like and feel free to comment anything you want down there. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.